how do you love? And today we are making caldo de res. And my friends from Jalisco call it cocido. So if you love you some cocido and you're a Mexican mom who followed through with their temptation on a hot day to make some caldo with all the delicious veggies, then stay tuned. I've got the perfect dish for you. So this morning I got up at four in the morning didn't want to wake you up, so I got my crock pot out very quietly, quietly while my family was still asleep, and I put in um, about two pounds, give or take, of meat, along with some chamorro meat. I will be putting a picture of the meat uh, of the chamorro so that you can know what it looks like um, on the next slide. But you can just buy yourself some beef stew meat and figure out how much, what portion you like in your soup. Um, and then go from there. But it has been cooking and doing all the work for me for about eight hours. And I've been at work. I just got home from work. So thank you, Crock-Pot. Now I'm gonna open it. It is time for the big reveal. So you're wondering, what did I put in here? Click on the link down below and I'll, sh I'll tell you all the ingredients that are in here. But for now, I will share. I put two whole corns um, like this, see? The whole corn. I don't know, corn on the husk, is that what you call it? I put one yellow jalapeno cut, uh, the chamorro meat. I put half of an onion, and I put a little bit of salt, garlic salt, beef uh, flavoring, and a little bit of granulated garlic. And I bought all of my ingredients at my local Costco and El Super. Now, you have two options. Option one, you can continue to cook everything in here. Option two, you can um, move, transport your current cooking situation over here and start cooking over here. So that's what I'm gonna be doing and I'll show you what that looks like, like next. But the reason that I put the corn in there is because I feel like it enhances the flavor. It's one of the ingredients that take longer to cook. So I thought it would be perfect. So I'm going to be adding the broth in here. Once the broth is in here, I will be adding some carrots. I already have some pre-chopped carrots. I usually like to get the diced ones, but this is all they have. So I'm gonna put a couple handfuls of carrots. I'm gonna put about three tablespoons, two tablespoons of pre-chopped cilantro, see? And then just a small handful of green beans because my family likes green beans, but not too much of them. And so you have to figure out what is your family like in their caldo. And then add that to make them happy, right? I also wanted to show you how tender my meat is. It is super tender. All of my, um, all of my family and friends who come and taste some cocido over at my house always ask, how did you get the meat so tender? And now you know the secret. But I do have a secret ingredient that I will be revealing at the end of this video. So stay tuned. So this is what my pot looks like right now. I've added the broth and the vegetables that I want to boil. Can you see it? Maybe I need to back it up, back it up, back it up. See, you kind of see it. And the reason that I am choosing to cook it on my stove top is because I want to speed up the process. So this is my beef stew and it has been boiling for about 25 minutes on medium high heat with just the green beans, the carrots, the cilantro. I added a little bit more water. I also tasted it and you can taste a hint of the jalapeno flavor in there. It tastes amazing. I removed, if you remember, I removed the jalapeno and the onion and it, the flavor is spectacular. And the reason I don't tell you that much about how much you should add is because you are a creative cook and you know exactly what your family loves and whatever you make with lots of love, they're going to love and enjoy. So I added about a tablespoon total of salt and I will be adding um, the water right below this area here. That's probably what it will reach to once I add all of my ingredients. In this bowl, I have half of a small, and it was small, <laughs> of a small cabbage in here. But if your family likes cabbage, feel free to add more. I also have some pre-chopped um, zucchini. It's two zucchinis that have been pre-chopped. So you can add as much or as little as you would like or other vegetables that your family likes. You're welcome to add it um, depending on, on the type of vegetable. So a potato you would add sooner because it takes longer to cook. 
But right now, my green beans are fork tender, my carrots are tender. I finished adding my cabbage and my zucchini. I think it'll take about 15 minute, minutes on medium, high heat. So remember I told you about the chamorro? This is the chamorro bone right here. And I'm gonna be cleaning my meat. It doesn't look like it's a lot of meat, but it is. I'm gonna be cleaning my meat and removing the fat and then adding it to my pot. So it's been 20 minutes and this is what my caldo looks like. You can see that the, the zucchini now has more color. And now I will be adding my corn and I'll show you how to plate uh, your caldo with corn in two different ways. And look at my caldo de res. It is ready to go. It is rich with all that meat. It's gonna be delicious. My family's gonna love it. And it's been cooking here for about 20 um, to 25 minutes. And stay tuned for the big reveal of the secret ingredient. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid of my pot on, turn off the heat and make some delicious rice. And here is a zoom in of how delicious this looks. See that? Looks amazing. So when people, come, when people come over my house and they have some caldo de res that I made from scratch, they ask me a couple of questions. First, they ask me about my corn. Like, where did you buy this corn? And how does it look like this? I came up with this creative idea from a friend and um, they suggested that I chop it up so that you wouldn't have to eat it in an embarrassing way in public in case you take it to work or if you're just eating with some friends and you just want to eat it normal, you just cook it in the soup. But then in the end, you cut, cut it from the husk or cob. I think that's how you say it. Okay, so a tip that I have for you because this took me years to learn, is that whenever you are making soup, any hot soup or stew, it is best that you serve a small portion on the side when you're tasting it and let it come to room temperature and then taste it. Because if you try to taste your soup while it's scorched and hot, you're gonna think it needs more seasoning and it's probably because your tongue can't really sense as well. And now it's time for the big reveal. The secret ingredient in this soup is lori seasoning i put a little sprinkle of it in the end and it just gives it this nice um, flavor that i can't describe but it's amazing and i tasted the soup and it tastes like you can taste the jalapeno you can taste all the vegetables my son just ate some and he's a really picky eater and he had two bowls of it and he said mom if i wasn't so full i would have a third so i'm really excited about you guys making this amazing dish if you want me to give you the recipe for the rice um click um, comment down below and I'll give you the recipe for the rice if there's enough comments. And in the meantime, remember that you are a creative cook and that if you make your food with love, your family will love and enjoy.